So many of us in the contracting world are looking for that next great lead source. We're looking for kind of lightning in a bottle. Hey everyone, welcome back to another Contractor Success Academy lesson. And today I'm really excited because our guest, Tony, Tony Hody, thanks for being with us, Tony. My pleasure, thanks for having me. Good stuff. So Tony, I had the opportunity to hear you speak uh, in Pittsburgh, I believe, about a year or so ago. You were phenomenal, I loved the session. Uh, so much so that we had you on our first uh, online event, the 2018 uh, Contractor Summit, and you delivered some awesome material there. So I'm, I'm stoked that you decided to join us in this academy and deliver a lesson. Today, we're going to talk about uh, job site marketing. You are the master at that. I think you've been touted by some of the ma big publications as the lead whisperer, the lead gen king. Uh, I thought we were the lead gen kings, but you know, according to Google and a lot of other big publishers, you're the man. So that's why you're here today. Well, um, I that. Definitely a, a passion of mine and I'm eager to share. Awesome, good stuff. So um, let's share your, your screen, Tony, see what you got lined up for us and let's get right into it. Okay, wonderful. So uh, on the job site marketing program that I want to share with you, I just want to talk about the basic fundamentals associated with lead generation. You know, so many of us in the contracting world are uh, just looking for that next great lead source. We're looking for kind of lightning in a bottle, if you will. And, you know, instead of focusing on some of the fundamentals and just getting better at the core business that we're already engaged in. So that's really what I want to focus on with respect to job site marketing and just turning one job into three jobs and maximizing what we're already doing, turning our existing job sites into a marketing opportunity going forward. Tony, I love that you mentioned that. I think far too many people are focused on generating you know, a huge volume of leads. And if you're putting money into the front end to generate leads, but you're neglecting the back end, you're going to be wasting a lot of ad dollars. So, I mean, this is key. I'm glad that you mentioned that early on in the session. Uh, let's throw it back to you and, and, and get into it. Yeah, what I want to focus on is just accelerating what we're already doing, taking our job sites that we're already working on and not just putting our installers to work, finishing the work, but putting our, our marketing team and our salespeople to work to generate more business and keep that trend moving in the right direction. So a lot of folks out there are very intimidated by trying new lead sources. And I can certainly understand why, you know, leads are extremely expensive. You know, I love this uh, image on the screen that says test your stupidity, insert a hundred dollars. And, you know, that oftentimes is what lead generation feels like. You just don't know if some of these lead sources are going to work out in your favor. Your hard-earned dollars need to be invested properly in order for you to get a return on your investment. And so sticking to the fundamentals can often be your safest bet. And that's what I want to focus on is the fundamentals of lead generation. You know, there really are four pillars, in my opinion, when it comes to lead generation in the home remodeling industry, four fundamentals that you want to master. And uh, I've, I've put them and listed them as, as the four R's, repeat business. You know, if we take care of our customers, the likelihood of us getting some repeat business, but not just taking care of them, there's some strategies we can employ to make sure that we're staying top of mind with them and that uh, they know that we're available for them and we can handle their next project. And there's some incentives for them to reach out to us, staying in touch with our past customers. And then, of course, you know, the next R in the uh, the four R's is referrals. So, uh, you know, having an, a system for generating referrals, not just, you know, taking them when they come or fielding them as they come, but having a system in place that will generate referrals for you. Um, and then the third R is going to be reviews. That's going to be generating reviews, online reviews, which have become such a major component in every aspect of marketing. You know, no matter how consumers come in contact with you, oftentimes they will do some research 
and they will determine whether or not they want to follow through with their appointment, whether or not they want to continue to shop around based on online reviews that they have found uh, while checking you out over the web. And then the last one, radius marketing. That's an old one. You know, radius marketing is working your job site, not just canvassing door to door, which is something that's near and dear to my heart, but also you can do radius marketing with direct mail. You can do radius marketing digitally in this day and age with some community pages and some other ways, um, things like Nextdoor and other avenues where you can work the radius around your job sites. Okay, so when it comes to repeat business, the key is going to be to visit your installations in progress. There's a huge opportunity for us to generate business, generate leads by visiting our installations in progress. Again, a lot of times we're sending our installers out there to do the work, and we're not sending anyone from our marketing or sales department to actually accelerate what we're already doing, to document it, to film it, and to visit with the customers during this exciting emotional time. So we love to visit these installations. We love to say thank you. We bring a gift basket with us. I'll talk a little bit more about that in a bit and just create that wow customer experience, going above and beyond what everyone else is doing to provide a wow customer experience. You know, we love to show gratitude with that gift basket that I mentioned. You know, there's a number of key items inside the gift basket that are very strategic in nature, and we'll talk about that, but we want to demonstrate our appreciation and we're going to stimulate reciprocity. When we do something kind for the homeowner, they become very open and very receptive to any ideas that we have for them. And so this is a really helpful in influencing and persuading the consumer on installation day. Again, when they're, they're at a peak state of, of happiness during the course of the progress, they're starting to see trans transformation of their home improvement project. But we follow a very defined process when we visit customers' installation. We're just not winging it over there. We've got a process that we follow and we stay disciplined for that process. You know, the gift basket that we have has some key key components to it. You know, we've got some things that are going to linger around the house for a long time. We've got things like refrigerator magnets and coffee mugs and candles. Um, there's some other edibles like chocolate or peanuts that we provide. And then, of course, we have our company gift card, and I'll talk about that. But this gift basket truly is like a Trojan horse, gets us back in front of the customer a second time uh, to take advantage of a number of opportunities. You know, when we provide the customer with a gift card to our company, that inspires them to consider future projects. It allows us to have a conversation about what would be next if they were hypothetically going to apply their gift card that they just received. So that gives them to start talking about, well, if we were to take advantage of the gift card, we would apply it towards more windows or a roof or siding or a bathroom, whatever it is on their wish list. And hopefully that's something that you can help them with. Furthermore, there's an expiration date on these company gift cards, which creates urgency and causes the consumer to consider doing the project sooner than later in order to take advantage of the special savings. Now, if you send a marketer, a brand ambassador, as we like to call them, out to the job site, you can schedule a follow-up appointment for the salesperson who originally sold the project. However, you know, however you do it at your company or if you have the salesperson stop out to the job site, you know, they can go ahead and quote them on the project right then and there. But definitely an opportunity to stimulate repeat business, one of the first fundamental R's in lead generation. You know, we do this exact same thing following a process, even on service calls. That's right. When we send a service technician out on a service call, we believe every single visit to the customer's home is a marketing or sales opportunity. There's an opportunity for you to follow a process, wear your shoe covered booties, resolve the customer's issue, deliver and explain a gift card and let them know that they're as a, as a satisfied customer or as a part of the, 
the family of customers. They are entitled to some special savings. Present them with the gift card, and you can uncover a future project that they may have in mind. You can acquire names and addresses of any referrals for neighbors, coworkers, family members. And so we follow a process even on a service call to turn that cost center into a profit center so that the legacy cost becomes now an opportunity. We use the, uh, the form that you see as our product selection chart uh, on the left-hand side of the screen there with the different products that you offer to kind of control the conversation so that when we ask them what's next on the home, we're kind of controlling their responses. They're not answering with landscaping or carpeting or something that we don't do. We are simply providing them with our project list. So we are much more likely to receive an answer that falls within the scope of work we provide. And so that is a a tool that can be very helpful in that regard. But whether we're visiting an installation while it's in progress for the first time or going back on a service call years later, this can be an opportunity for you to generate more business, repeat business, referral business. These are some photos that we gather while we're at even service calls, again, for social media and for social proof to show customers that we come back after the work is done to service customers. This goes a long way with giving consumer confidence that you're not just there for that initial one-time sale, but you're going to take care of people in the long run. And just giving you another example of how you can turn a service call into a potential marketing opportunity. Now we're going to talk a little bit about referrals and stimulating referral business. I mentioned to you that we use this company gift card that we've created as a tool for stimulating both repeat business, but also referral business. And the way that we stimulate referral business is by explaining to the customer that they can transfer this gift card to a friend family member or coworker or neighbor, and we can frame it as a gift. This is something that someone who would appreciate. This is a discount, a large discount off a home improvement project, and you can transfer it if you're not going to use it yourself. If you are going to use it yourself, we can certainly see if we can get another one from the company that you could gift to a friend, family member, or neighbor. But this frames the entire situation up a little differently. Now it's who can benefit, who would really appreciate this gift versus who can you turn me on to? Um, you know, and, and, and that's really the difference. We want to change the framework so that we can stimulate more referrals in that fashion. You know, having a sheet that will help prompt referrals. Do you have any family members that own homes in the area? Do you have any coworkers that may appreciate this? I noticed when I pulled up into the driveway that the homeowners on both sides still had the original windows or had some wear and tear on the roof. And so this will help you stimulate by asking questions. Do you think your neighbor would appreciate this gift card? I noticed they had the original windows in the home. I noticed they still had some wear and tear on the roof. That way you're using the gift card in this prompting method to stimulate more referral business. Sit, boo-boo, sit. You know, my dog Daphne comes to work with me every single day. She's in the showroom. She's our chief morale officer. Daphne does a number of tricks that I've taught her over the years. And, you know, what's interesting is when you teach a dog tricks, you do it in phases. If you want the dog to let you know that it has to go to the bathroom, you can get it to ring the bell that's hanging from your door. And then you reward the dog for ringing the bell. And then you reward the dog again after it goes outside and goes to the bathroom. You you do that in steps along the way. You reward good behavior as it happens. And, you know, that's what we need to do with consumers as well. We need to reward good behavior as it happens. And what I mean by that is we don't simply reward people for providing information to those who buy from us. We need to provide rewards to those who are referred to us, period. Anyone that they refer to us should be rewarded, not just those who buy from us. 
They will refer more often and they will refer more carelessly, more carefree if they were going to, are going to be rewarded without uh, the expectation that these people are going to have to buy from you. You know, so we, t- t- Tony, sorry, just to kind of jump in there. So I understand that. And I love that analogy with, with the dog of, you know, ring the doorbell reward and go outside reward. That's awesome. Um, hopefully contractors don't go and start installing doorbells in their, <laughs> in their office. But um, jokes aside, you know, the idea of referring for a referral, I love, I think a lot of people think, okay, you know, I get close business. I'll give you a little something, but the idea of referring for the refer. um, uh, gifting something for the referrals. Interesting. What would you tell somebody to do if you, you know, you're referred somebody, you send a little, you know, gift basket or gift card or something like that. And then that business does close. Do you go over and above and give something else or is it thank you or it, it stops there? You know, that's really up to you. You can always go above and beyond and say, you know, the person that you referred to us did end up moving forward and give them an additional reward. That's certainly um, going to help encourage that type of behavior. Again, let's reward good behavior. But at the very least, let's start by saying thank you. But I'm a huge believer in not just saying thanks, but giving thanks. Because people pay much more attention to your actions than they pay attention to your words. So I'm huge on giving thanks, not just saying thanks. And we have a program for that that I've designed, and it's been overwhelmingly positive. This program is called the Referral Squirrel. It's extremely memorable. When one of our customers, friends, families, neighbors, when someone refers a prospect to our company, within a day or two, they're going to receive a package at their door with a referral squirrel inside, this stuffed squirrel here that comes holding a gift card, and there's a number of different restaurant options available to them. So, you know, if they happen to have a preference, they have multiple choices to choose from. And this thank you is received in in, in such a, a positive light and it stimulates more referrals. And we don't wait to find out if they have bought from us. We don't even wait till the appointment has taken place. If someone, you know, if we receive a phone call or if we receive a name, address, and phone number for referral, the minute we find out that that's that's a legitimate referral, we immediately send out a package with the referral squirrel. And you know what? The referral squirrel goes nuts for referrals. And so that's the whole idea is just to keep them coming. And uh, it's a very memorable program. And it's something that is gaining traction and really growing legs for a number of companies uh, around the country that have taken this concept and, and saying thank you and rewarding good behavior as it comes to stimulate more referral business. You know, we, we yeah, Tony, just to kind of jump in there, I know there's a lot of stats that get kind of thrown around in the industry, but the average lead is somewhere in the 360 or 70 some odd dollar range. So for people watching this thinking that, wow, that's expensive, you know, a stuffed animal and a $50 gift card, compare it with any other one of your lead sources. And, you know, 50, 60, 70 bucks is a pretty, pretty nice lead relative to what you stand to make if something like that closes. And even if you've got to send out, you know, 10 of these things before you end up closing one, you know, six, 700 bucks to go and acquire a new job that can potentially be, you know, 20, 30 windows being replaced on a home. I mean, there's a nice ROI there. So I could definitely see how that works. And question um, is this all managed manually? Is there some kind of third party that you guys use to help facilitate all the logistics behind this? Or So good question. We have these packages already prepared in advance so that they are ready to be delivered. Uh, okay. you know, if, if a referral comes in, you know, th- this package can go out that day. Um, they're all, you know, prepared in advance. And, you know, we have sourced all these items from the gift cards to the, um, you know, to the thank you card that, that goes with it and, and the stuffed animal. It, you know, it is, like you mentioned, under $70 delivered to their doorstep, which for a referral lead, uh, you know, that's considered one of the top leads in the business, either a referral or a repeat customer. The two top lead sources in the industry, you would pay a premium for these. And, you know, what we're finding that's very, very interesting, Mark, is that when a prospect 
okay, um, receives uh, when a when a prospect finds out that their friend who referred them received a gift from your company before you ever even made it out to their home to estimate, the closing percentages are much higher because they just kind of see what kind of company they're dealing with, someone that's appreciative, people that say thank you, and the type of organization they'd like to do business with. So that's yeah. been pretty, pretty impressive. I love that. That's good. We get a lot of overwhelming feedback, customers thanking us for the referral squirrel, young and old. And you know what's even better is we've had a number of them posting photos online on Facebook talking about how they received this unexpected gift. And they're, in essence, promoting our business for us because of the fact that we took the time to say thank you and send this package out to them. So it's been a home run for us, and we strongly encourage that you take advantage of some type of rewards program that is proactive in nature, go on offense, not defense, and reward consumers as soon as the referral comes in. Don't wait for them to buy from you. Nice. The next topic I wanted to talk to you about, again, is one that's definitely very near and dear to my heart. That's radius marketing around the job site in tight proximity, close circumference around the job site, taking advantage of the fact that you're working in the area. We want to celebrate the fact that we're working in the area. Yard signs, which is such a simple but often overlooked step in the process, making sure everybody knows who's working on the home, when they're working on the home, while the activity is at its highest point, trucks, installers, and nosy neighbors, all that kind of stuff. We want to make sure that visibility is high. You know, anything you can do to elevate the visibility, balloons, orange cones. You know, I believe firmly in something called the red carpet treatment that I'm going to share with you here. And that's where we just really take customer care to the next level. You know, here's an example of a red tarp that's underneath a pickup truck designed to catch any falling debris off of the truck, any fluids that could leak from the vehicle to protect the driveway, to protect tires from from any type of punctures, things of that nature. And the fact that you're taking this extra care gets noticed by neighbors, gets noticed by dog walkers, gets noticed by people driving by. This is a very unique uh, setup and not something you see every day. So uh, this little strategy goes a long way. And of course, when filming job site videos and uploading to social media, every little bit of branding helps. You know, getting your company logo on welcome mats and rugs that are laid in the foyer will help your customer remember you, but it will also help all of those individuals who are watching any videos that you post on social media in community pages or closed groups. It's going to brand your company as you talk about your brand, as you talk about the improvements that you're making for your customer. So just going that extra mile and providing that wow experience is going to create more repeat and more referral business and even get you noticed in a radius marketing type of scenario. Um, we do a lot of job site videos that we are uploading. You know, we really celebrate and just push these videos up to social media, you know, so that people can see what we're doing. And, you know, these videos are not necessarily extremely polished or, um, you know, scripted or you know, planned out. These videos are spontaneous and they are just kind of rolling testimonials, as we call them, you know, reality TV style. People are used to HGTV in this day and age. And, you know, this type of video goes a long way. Even interviewing the installers and asking them what phase in the project they're in at this moment when you're filming, these things go a long way in increasing your visibility in a tight radius online. I think that's a great point, Tony. Like, you know, when we talk about video and, you know, people are always scratching their, their heads thinking, what are we going to produce? What are we going to say? What are we going to do? I mean, there's a job being done. This stuff's easy. Talk to your customers, talk to your installers. I mean, that's, that's a great point. You've got all your content there. Just whip out the phone, 
and just go around and ask questions. And you've got some great footage there and you can educate and inform people and uh, sort of make people feel envious. Oh, one of my neighbors is doing this. That's, that's pretty good. Maybe it's about time we, we consider doing that. You know, this is this awesome stuff. And then with social as well, you can also put a couple ad dollars in there to promote that, get more exposure locally and uh, engagement helps, right? Shares and likes and comments. It's just people kind of working together, bring a lot more visibility to one thing you're doing. So again, it's the idea of taking, you know, work that you've done once and just, you know, getting much more of an impact, much more reach and visibility from that. Uh, This is great. Yeah. You know, and you bring up a great point, Mark. A lot of folks say, Tony, you're so creative with some of these things. And, you know, I appreciate the, uh, the compliments, but the truth is in most of these videos that we're posting, I'm simply documenting. That's all I'm doing. I'm not creating anything. I am documenting the fact that we received the window delivery and we film the window delivery and how careful we are in unloading the truck. And we film the installation. It's something we're already doing. We're not going above and beyond. We're just documenting our process and sharing it. Now, if you happen to get bad footage, guess what? It goes in the trash. We don't have to upload that for any reason. Um, So, you know, don't be afraid to take some risks and, and get some great footage. The before and after photos, the testimonial photos, the testimonial vi- videos, and fill your storybook because facts tell, but stories sell. And that's really what it's all about. Storytelling online by documenting our process while we're at the job site. It's a home run. These are just some examples of all the 100% satisfied photos that we've been able to acquire by visiting our job sites and doing so at the time the job is completed so that the customer's satisfaction level is at the highest and really eager to reciprocate after they've been given the gift basket, after they've seen the transformation at their home. These go a long way and We're really proud of all the happy customers that we have out there, but nothing is more important than getting mileage out of it. And that's what we're able to do from these job site visits. And then the old fashioned way, of course, and that's getting out and knocking on doors, something I love to do, you know, while you're working in the area, apologizing for any noise or debris or commotion or disruption, you know, letting the neighbors know that you're working nearby, let them know what you're doing and how long you'll be there. And, you know, being very specific as to who you're working for, this goes a long way with consumers and developing trust for future lead opportunities. You know, love this meme that was sent to me many years ago. They said I could be anything. So I became a door knocker. <laughs> There's a, you know, a lot of folks uh, have their own opinions about uh, door knockers. But the fact of the matter is it really, really works. And, you know, I've got lots of footage of my escapades in the field, knocking on doors. And uh, now is not necessarily time to show you all the footage that we have, but, you know, just incredible responses that we get from consumers where you've got 100% satisfaction. This particular video, I'm wearing my surveillance glasses and you can see the home here in its current state. And then you can see the home after a a month has gone by after we sold the project. And uh, the garage doors installed, the entry doors installed, the patio doors and window were installed, all from a canvas lead. It was generated on a Friday. It was sold the following Saturday morning. You can see even a new driveway, that little Maisie standing on there. So a huge sale transaction resulting from a canvassing lead. And uh, it really does work to get out there and spread the good word while you're in the neighborhood. You know, we have some collateral materials that, again, instill trust, let people know where we're working and what we're doing there. And we also have some post-it style sticky notes that we leave behind. They outperform door hangers tremendously for a number of reasons. And these post-it style sticky notes do stimulate inbound calls, letting people know what it is you do while you're in the area, even if they're not home at the time you stop by. You know, in this day and age, people just don't talk as much as they used to. The neighbors don't communicate in the same fashion that they used to. They're communicating online in sites like Nextdoor and in the Facebook community pages, asking for recommendations. 
And for that reason, we believe that there is an opportunity to canvas digitally. You can actually generate leads in tight proximity around your job sites by going online on Facebook and simply, again, celebrating the installations. We do a number of uh, fun, engaging videos that really stimulate a high number of likes, shares, comments, um, simply by running contests. If you can guess where we're installing today in such and such community, we'll reward you with a $50 Visa gift card or a $100 Visa gift card, depending upon how difficult that trivia question may be. But again, it's drawing attention to the job site, getting people to focus on the fact that you're working in the area. And then we're accelerating that engagement by putting a little uh, little spiff in place for those that are paying attention and uh, joining in on the fun and commenting and, and sharing the video. So we believe Facebook is like the new NBC or the new network TV, huge opportunity for us to get on there. And it doesn't cost us much of anything to get out there and push these videos up to Facebook. This is an opportunity that won't last forever. And we need to take advantage of the fact that our customer is surfing on Facebook and there's a huge opportunity for us to do some radius marketing and take advantage of where we're working and what we're doing there. So this is a high visibility scenario that can be extremely targeted, especially, especially if you are getting into some of these community pages where people are paying close attention as to what's going on in their neighborhoods. You know, this can have an immediate and a long-term branding effect, and we consider it cyber canvassing online. And a lot, of your, a lot of your competitors are never going to do this. And the reason they're never going to do this is because they don't take care of customers like you do. They cannot post online because there's going to be comments below, when are you coming back to finish my job? When are you coming back to take care of that service item? So this is a great opportunity to go where they ain't and really take advantage of a, a unique opportunity. Reviews, that's something that I want to talk to you about that I think is so critical in this day and age. And I want to present you, there's a lot of statistics about reviews. I don't want to refer much to statistics. I want to just talk about straight facts. You know. Positive online reviews increase inquiries. They make more leads. They increase trust and provide more sales. They increase conversions, which ultimately leads to more profits, and they improve your company morale. Even, even potential candidates, new recruits are going to go online and read reviews about your company. So it's just so critical and vital to your organization. We receive phone calls every single day in my retail business for people that have read reviews online, are incredibly impressed with what they've seen. And as a result, they're picking up the phone and calling. And it sounds a little bit like this. Who can we thank for referring it to us? Um, I actually just was looking on Google and you guys had excellent reviews. So five stars. I figured I'd give you a call to shut up and ask a minute. And that's what... Consumer activity sounds like in this day and age. Consumers are changing their behavior. There's a shift. They are finding out who's in the category and they're reading reviews about that organization and deciding whether they want to follow through with the appointment or whether they want to schedule an appointment at all, whether they want to purchase from your company. So much is impacted by reviews. You know, it doesn't matter how they originally encounter your company, whether you knock on their door, whether you meet them at a home show, or whether they've heard you from TV or radio, even if they see a truck drive by, they're going to Google to see what kind of organization you are and where you're located, what your reviews are like. All of this is going to be searched online. It's imperative that your online reputation be intact. You know, negative online reviews are often like carbon monoxide. You can't see the effect. You can't necessarily hear the effect or measure the effect, but you will never be able to measure the number of phone calls you didn't receive because someone read something online that they didn't like, or someone saw something online that they didn't like. So really important to accelerate your success with positive online reviews. 
And we're going to talk about how you can do that through these job site marketing visits. You know, watch the Super Bowl last year. A lot of people thought the Super Bowl was extremely boring. And the reason they thought it was extremely boring is because there was, you know, very little offense, the defensive game. And, you know, when it comes to online reviews, we have to go on offense. We have to be the ones asking for the reviews and acquiring the reviews. We can't just wait for bad reviews or mediocre reviews to come in and then react to them. We want to go out and be proactive, go on offense. And a lot of us, our offensive skills are pretty weak. You know, I'm seeing that most companies do not have a system in place for acquiring online reviews. If they do, they're trying to do it digitally in a very, very casual way. We have to be proactive. You know, when it comes to offense, most of us, we're doing it wrong for sure. So um, <laughs> having said that, um, okay, so when it comes to online reviews, it's important to understand what gets measured gets managed. It's like any other important metric in your business. What gets measured gets managed. And most of us are not paying close enough attention to how we're doing, how many reviews we have, how frequently we're acquiring them, and looking at our overall scores, not just on one particular site, but on all websites that have an impact. So I put together something I call a social media scoreboard, and this is just the common sites that many consumers will visit to check your reputation. And it's a scoreboard where we measure our company versus our top competitors. And I really love to drive positive behavior and acquire online reviews that far exceed our competitors so that we can take this graph to a home show. We can take this graph to the kitchen table when we're selling a project and we can show superiority, show authority that we far exceed the customer service levels of our competition. And if you're paying attention to it and you're driving that behavior and you're incentivizing that through the ranks of your organization, you should be able to succeed and be superior to all of your competition with respect to your status online. It's just a matter of going on offense and making this a priority. So many of us just aren't taking the time to measure and manage these statistics. You know, when it comes to acquiring online reviews, I think it's something you need to do in person. So many of us are trying to digitize this. We're trying to ask for reviews via email and customers don't respond. We ask for reviews via text and customers are too busy in their own life worrying about their own issues and concerns that it's not a priority for them. Life gets in the way. Even when we ask over the telephone, they tell us they'll get around to it and we're still not seeing the response. In my organization, you know, we have done an excellent job in getting face to face with our customers. Again, either on installation day or within a few days of the completed installation. And we assist them with the online reviews while we are present in person. And this makes a huge difference. They take the time to write the review because of reciprocity. We've given them the gift basket. We walk them through it. And we've set the expectation up front that we're going to come take some before and after photos of the work. We have a gift for them and we'd like to get their feedback on their experience. We can also ask for reviews from friends and family. I'm not talking about false reviews. I'm talking about just reviews that state to the reliability of the company, that this is a good organization. I would strongly recommend them. You can ask for reviews from your vendors in this vein, that this is the company that I would recommend in this area. So we're not asking for them to say they remodeled my home. We're just asking them to give a vote of confidence to help drive reviews. And so you can trade reviews with other colleagues in the same fashion and help in an ethical way build your positive reviews online. You can see in my organization, in a very short period of time, we've been able to drive a high number of reviews, all five-star reviews, by going on offense, and this has had an incredible impact on lead generation. We do all of this, the four R's I'm referring to, repeat business, referral business, radius marketing around the job site, 
and driving online reviews with one key employee that we call a brand ambassador. This individual visits job sites and they deliver the gift basket and they follow a disciplined process to generate leads through these fundamental channels. And we coach a number of businesses on how to be effective with this so that you can maximize your opportunity instead of going out and trying all kinds of new lead sources that may or may not work for you. We like to stick with the fundamentals and help people maximize their potential through job site marketing, radius marketing, repeat referral, these fundamentals. And it has been extremely effective with one person accountable and, and t- holding them accountable in all of these categories. So again, the pillars that I believe really help a remodeler with leads from channels that are so important, your, your pillars, your repeat business, your referral business, your radius around job sites, and then of course the online reviews, which accelerates all of it is so essential to your fundamental growth. There's obviously a number of ways to generate leads, literally hundreds of sources out there available to us. But I think it's important for us to master the fundamentals before we move on to more sophisticated uh, means of lead generation. Well, Tony, um, I think you've you've shared a lot uh, of, of, of great information here. I think there's a lot for people to digest and kind of think about I think what I like most about this particular lesson is that a lot of this stuff is being done. So as you mentioned early on, you get a lot of, of um, you know, praise for being creative. But like you say, you're not necessarily being all that creative. You're just leveraging what you're already doing. You're documenting. And I think for a lot of people, there's, there's a lot of activity happening in the day-to-day operations, but there's no brand ambassador in place. There's nobody whose role it is. Uh, who, who, whose job it is to kind of champion this stuff, right? Get those, uh, get back in front of the customer and 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 ask for for the reviews and send out those those uh, those thank yous and those gift cards and that kind of stuff. And that's kind of been the epiphany for me. I think yeah. there, are, um, you know, with each particular pillar that you mentioned, I think you know what is stand out. Obviously, in terms of getting repeat business, is just um, you know showing gratitude, reciprocity. I mean, these are just um, psychological laws that apply. I mean, you give, you get kind of thing. That's fundamental. Uh, Referrals, rewarding for referrals, not for sales is huge. And I love the referral squirrel thing. I think we might uh, steal that here internally. Um, You know, reviews, the scoreboard, that's awesome. What a tool to be able to leverage at shows or in person when you're selling to say, hey, we've done some of the legwork. As much as you can, you know, be your own kind of, uh, uh, you know, private investigator and do your research and Google everything. Well, here's, here's an up to date <laughs> chart, you know, which is, which is kind of cool. Uh, and then finally, um, you know, not asking only your customers for reviews, but just people who you have uh, business relationships with neighbors, that kind of thing. I think that's awesome. Um, so, I mean, there, there's just, I can keep going on and on and on. There's tons of golden nuggets in here. Um, I want to thank you, Tony, for putting this, this lesson together. I'm sure that uh, people will, uh, people who've never heard of you before, uh, you'll definitely be on their radar now and people will be paying a lot closer attention to what you're doing uh, with Tony Hody Consulting as well as maybe your own businesses. So, Awesome. Well, I, I enjoyed it. I, I love sharing success stories and success leaves clues. And so I, I thank you for the opportunity to share them. Awesome, Tony. Well, thanks again for being with us and uh, we'll catch you again soon. Cheers. All right. Thanks.